Hello Year 11 and welcome to another lesson in your unit of work, the UK's evolving human landscape. Today we're going to be focusing on 5.8a, which is looking at the challenges affecting rural areas. We're going to focus mostly on Cornwall as a case study, but also we'll start applying what we know about turling to this detailed content too. So make sure you now have some paper, a pen, or make sure you have a Word document up for you to be able to complete the work as we go through this lesson. The title today is Challenges Facing Rural Areas of the UK. Hopefully today you're going to be able to describe how rural areas of the UK are deprived. You're going to be able to explain how they are deprived and also why they are deprived and start to assess the challenges facing rural groups of people in areas of the UK. Now we've already looked at one area in the UK. We looked at Turling last week. Turling is a rural area just northeast of London. We looked at its location in re relation to Chelmsford and also some of the main routes into London. We also started to think about how accessible rural areas and cities depend on one another. And we answered a question similar to the one on the board. What I would like you to do is just think about this question again. It's an important question and I'd like you to just jot down some of your ideas and then we'll go through together what it is you should have got in your answer. OK, so first and foremost, when we're thinking about cities and accessible rural areas, depending on one another, remembering that this is called interdependence, we need to think about how London has benefited from residents moving to Turling and also how Turling has benefited from residents moving. Sorry, how Turling has also benefited from residents moving into Turling from London, potentially. So we need to think about the benefits of this relationship on Turling, but also the benefits of this relationship on London. So to give you an idea of what answers you could get, OK, in order to gain two full marks, you need at least two reasons, OK, get explaining why cities and accessible rural areas depend on each other. So you could have thought about accessible rural areas being important because they allow people to live there whilst working in the city. There aren't enough people living in the centre of the city to do all of the jobs. So London requires on places like Turling to fill up the jobs in the city. Also, accessible rural areas provide important countryside areas that people who live in the city can visit during their leisure time. So that's another point that maybe we didn't explore as much last week. But definitely people who live in the city do rely quite heavily on the countryside in order to get away, maybe get some fresh air, go and explore a different area. Also, cities provide more shops and leisure facilities, which are important for accessible rural areas because many services have closed there, so people rely on the cities. So if you remember, we looked at Turling and we were thinking about, OK, well, some of the services in Turling have now closed down. So those people who live in Turling have to rely on cities and towns elsewhere. So they're lucky that Chelmsford is so close. They could go to Chelmsford for some of their um, shopping and leisure facilities, but also they are very close to London, so they can use London for those things too. So making sure you just understand what this question is asking you and how you would go about answering it. So moving on to our main content for this week, we're going to be looking and focusing heavily on Cornwall as a case study. But as I mentioned, we're also going to be thinking about turling and how some of these challenges we're discussing will also relate to turling. It says here Cornwall and Turling are rural areas, but they're very different. Turling is a small village and Cornwall is a large county with many villages. So that's something to remember. Cornwall is a county. OK, Turling is a village within the county of Essex. So have a look on the map. Make sure you have an understanding of where Cornwall and Turling both are. And what I'd like you to do for your task one, this is something that you will submit to your teacher. You're going to describe the location of Cornwall within the UK. So you just need to describe the location of Cornwall. I'd like you to think about the country it's in, England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland. OK, I'd like you to think about um, the compass points and I'd also like you to try and find out what the neighbouring county is of Cornwall. 
So is Cornwall in the northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest? And what is the neighbouring county? So have a go at that. Pause the video now and answer that question. OK, so just to give you an idea of what Cornwall looks like, it is largely coastal, as you could see on the previous slide. It is a peninsula right in the southwest of the United Kingdom and it is beautiful. It's a beautiful place to visit. It's a beautiful place to live. However, it is very, very deprived. So we are going to explore the levels of deprivation in Cornwall throughout this lesson. We're also going to think about the challenges that this then brings. So what you will see in, in your Satchel One upload, there is a news article about Cornwall in crisis. I'd like you please to read that and make sure you understand some of the content it's discussing. Now, one of the main reasons for deprivation in Cornwall, like many other rural areas, is their remoteness. Cornwall is quite isolated and we would refer to Cornwall as a periphery area. London would be our core area and we've got other core areas, other cities like Birmingham, Manchester, Nottingham, Liverpool. OK, they would be our core areas. But Cornwall is actually a periphery area, so it's quite isolated. And if you remember from previous lessons, we talked about how much funding Cornwall has received from the EU and how important it is for transport and communication to be improved in Cornwall remembering back to the fact that Cornwall doesn't have any motorways going through it so there's there are no motorways in the county of Cornwall it makes it really difficult for people to get around and it means that some people become quite isolated so that can be one of the main reasons really that Cornwall is so deprived so what I'd like you to do is on the next few slides read but it's not perfect and also the decline in primary employment so I've put the information on the next couple of slides and I'd like you to answer these three questions. What are the main reasons for the decline of farming, fishing, china clay quarrying and tin mining? Why is Cornwall's location affecting the income of the county? And explain why quality of life is low for people in Cornwall. So I'll give you some time to read through this information. So you can see here change in Cornwall there is a good map there, detailed map, but it shows clearly that there are no motorways, only A roads that go through. You can also see that Cornwall borders the county of Devon. And what you can see is it's actually one of the UK's most popular holiday destinations. So it has 700 kilometres of coastline, sandy beaches, small fishing harbours and isolated coves. People love it, which explains why it has one of the UK's fastest growing populations. However, it is not all perfect. So in spite of its holiday image, Cornwall has some problems. It's a long county. Road and rail transport is slow. There are no motorways and trains take two hours between Plymouth and Penzance, okay, which is not very far, but it's taking a long time. There are no large population centres, so there's no big cities, no, nowhere with large populations. But there are lots of small towns, but none really large enough to attract large employers. So TNCs aren't going to Cornwall to locate. So with lots of people in areas, TNCs will be attracted. Big companies will be attracted to locate their offices or um, manufacturing there. Unfortunately, that is not happening in Cornwall because there are no large population centres. There's also no knowledge economy. So this is a problem. So what that means as a result is Cornwall actually has the UK's lowest weekly wage to only £340 compared to a UK average of £405. And London, which has a weekly average wage of £660. So Cornwall has one of the lowest weekly wages for its um, residents. Much employment, typical of tourist areas, is seasonal. So it's part time and low wage. So this means that people might only be employed for half of the year in the summer months. And this is a real problem. Also, if we're thinking about current the current climate, Cornwall will have been hit really hard in the pandemic because obviously people are not going there on holiday as frequently and that is its main economy. And then it starts talking about the decline in the in primary employment. So 
Cornwall's biggest problem is employment. It used to employ most people in primary industries, the primary economy in farming, in fishing, in china clay quarrying and tin mining. As you can see when you read through this slide, these have all declined. So basically the number of dairy cattle has fallen by 60% and that is because actually it's very, very difficult to make a living from dairy farming. Milk prices are so low that farmers are not making enough profit so that they're having to close their farms. Fishing also has suffered serious decline caused by overfishing of the UK's fish stocks by the UK and EU fishing boats. So now there's just not enough fish to actually, again, make a living. So that's also declined. China clay quarrying. Um, some of the best China clay in the world is found in Cornwall. The quarries are owned by a French TNC. In the 1960s, over 10,000 people were employed there. Now, cheaper clay overseas has reduced the number of jobs to under a thousand. So 9,000 fewer jobs being um, available in Cornwall because of the China clay and people going overseas for their clay. And then finally, tin mining. Tin is hard to mine, needs a high global price to make it worth mining. And unfortunately, the tin prices collapsed collapsed so they reduced globally which led to the closure of Cornwall's last mine in 1998. So we've got four industries there that have all experienced decline so people are no longer employed and are struggling to find work. So there's a summary so you can just summarise kind of why Cornwall has experienced such decline. It's because of the decline in the primary industry, it's because of the lack of job opportunities now which means that lots of young people are moving out of Cornwall and it's leaving behind an ageing population. And also there are few services. So shops, schools, post office close as people are moving away for work, which then again, a bit like in Turling, creates more economic problems and social isolation. So that's a summary there. Now, obviously, all of these changes have led to different challenges in rural areas. And on the next slide, you'll see some statements. OK, and I would like you to sort those statements into the correct columns in the table, which is on slide 15. So I want you to decide whether it's a rural challenge with employment, rural challenge with healthcare provision, rural challenges with education provision or rural challenge with housing. So this decline in Cornwall and this um, these challenges in Turling also exist. So I'd like you to go through and I would like you to organise the statements into those four categories. So here's some more information that again will come in very useful. I'd like you to also to read this before completing the next task. Here are your statements. I'd like you to read through the statements and divide them up into these four categories. You can do this either on paper or you can do it on the PowerPoint presentation or you could do it in a Word document too. So as you can see, we've got some of the answers here. Um, I'm not going to go through them all necessarily, but hopefully you can now just check your answers and make sure you got on the right track. So with rural challenges with employment, obviously the large employment employers, as we've already seen, like TNCs, are not going to Cornwall because there are not enough people to work for them. It's got a low weekly wage of £340 a week in comparison to London. Dairy farms around Turling, again, no longer provide jobs and employment is seasonal. And there is, has been a decline in the primary economy. So they are all the challenges facing Cornwall and places like Turling in terms of employment with healthcare provision. We've got issues with the doctor surgeries only being open one morning a week and also um, the ageing population putting pressure on the limited health services. There is also one main hospital, which is 30 miles away from some parts of Cornwall. Young people have to travel great distances, up to 30 miles, to reach the main sick form in the county. And then for housing, we've got problems with demand for homes by people who work in the city and want to live in rural areas, that was in Turling, and a demand for second homes. Lots of wealthy city workers are buying their second home in Cornwall, and that pushes up the property price for local people. 
So your plenary is this four mark question. So hopefully you can apply all of the previous information into answering this question. Explain how economic changes has affected one rural area you've studied. So you can use Cornwall here or you could use Tarling. And I'd like you to focus on one rural area and you should explain at least two ways in which it has been affected by economic change. In order to get these marks, you can use some of the information on the board here, but I'd like you to try and write this in your own words as best as you can. I hope that's all made sense. As always, submit all of your work on Satchel 1 and email your teacher if you have any questions at all. I'll see you again next week.